first tee shot yesterday, top. Oh, cool. First approach shot, top. Guys. Duff the chip. Yep. Well, just a loss of... A massive loss of confidence. Yeah. Well, I mean, I say I control it more. I haven't found a club pace yet, apart from with the putter. Oh, yes. Mm. It's the one. The pressure's moving. And the body's following. Brilliant. Oh. Yeah, it's a ball play. You've got to give your pat self a pat on the back sometimes, George. Brilliant. Well done, mate. Awesome. So you know George as the cameraman, but you also know him if you've seen the videos from much earlier on in the channel. George has been a couple of times. Obviously, we're working a lot now on the game too. And we played yesterday, didn't we, George? Well, you guys did. <laughs> I came out with the intention of playing, but yeah, it wasn't very good. And that's why we're here today. So we thought we'd share it with you. We thought we'd do a little bit of a tutorial because it might help you guys out there who might be experiencing similar issues to what George experienced yesterday, which was, well, just a loss of... A massive loss of confidence. Yeah. So I went out the day before with Craig uh, and Rob from Eagle Apparel and I was striping it off the tee, very happy, uh, long, where I wanted to put it. Approach shots were generally good. Yeah. If they weren't spot on, they'd only be a little bit out. Felt very good with the game and then yeah, First tee shot yesterday, top. Oh, cool. First approach shot, top. Guys. Duff the chip. Yep. Duffed it. And psh, that's it. By the end of that hole, you're just like, oh, where's it gone? So it's, I mean, it's a massive notch of confidence. What we're going to look at now is look at George's swing. Maybe there's a few things that you might, that might relate to you as well, because we all experience that at some point where the swing drops off and we're thinking we, we don't get, we haven't got a feel for it. Why is it not? Why am I not getting the strike? Why am I losing the distance? Why? Or why am I just not having, why haven't I got a feel for the swing I'm making anymore? So I think taking that range game to the course is something we all experience and maybe have trouble with sometimes, but it's a different game. It's a different environment, so we need to be practicing how we want to play and use the range as the golf course. But today we're going to just have a quick look at George's swing and see what we can pick up on, which is going to get that strike back. So it's all about strike today, because George has got control of his ball flight, lovely draw, hitting it normally a good strong distance. And I guess that's where my focus has been, uh, possibly to the detriment of other elements of the swing. So it's a good opportunity to brush up on strike. So we'll hit a few shots, George, and see how it's see how it's looking. <laughs> Absolutely caned it. That was, I mean, that was uh, that was a bit holding back a little bit in terms of that was a bit. Seemed like you cut your finish off. Yeah, that was that just wasn't all out. No, you still hold it still And that probably comes from, bit of, comes from a bit of anxiety. Having experienced yesterday, it comes from a bit of oh must try and control yeah. this thing a bit more. A bit of apprehension behind it, just kinda of not quite committed, letting letting yourself go, but not like we say, not in a in a meaningless way. It's kind of understanding there's a lot of purpose behind your movement letting the movement happen basically yeah. that's like essentially letting it go letting the movement happen just a bit clean yeah Big letting it go is not gripping loose feeling the club and all this kind of stuff right. yeah look that might be important i grip it tighter than ever now yeah but it's but then have the shoulders and the elbows and the wrists it's letting the body the move so that's yeah. letting it go it's actually letting the body move yeah allowing the body to move not restricting it There you go, that felt a bit Perfect. more. Yeah, like that flow. Yeah. And so allowing your body to move also allows it to stabilize. So we don't get stability from staying static or we've not got, we've not got many available parts left to move. We let everything go and then the body will stabilize itself. So just hit a couple more, George, it's good. So it's, we've got that strike, but it's, it's coming and going. Now that's the one. Yeah, it's a different shot. Now, what we have to talk about is, that's if you want to step, step on that one, George, I will use this Jarif board. So, we can move 
well in many ways but if we're talking about horizontal movement so we can use pressure which is the lower body moving now moving pressure quite violently from side to side but the central mass is very stable or we can move that pressure by moving our centre of mass which is less stable and if we need to do this at speed we're moving our centre of mass big body segments at speed towards the edge of the base of support and either we're going to lose our balance or we're going to stop earlier essentially the body might just restrict this movement because it knows potentially it's yeah, it's, it's compromising the balance so let's get a feel of how we can move our body weight by using the pressure so first just bang the board and now use that banging of the board to move the body weight tr before you even feel the body weight load fully onto that leg bang the board back so it's but we want to rotate now with it so it's a much sh sharper movement yeah now if we introduce the club let's start over here with the board for you tilted to the left and then we're going to rock it back and throw it to that same place but now we're going to do it much quicker and bang the board bang bang to get it to there yeah <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't quite timed, but... Good. So you might hear the term lag. And essentially, this is the pressure shift in relation to where the club head is. Not wrist angles, nothing else. It's kind of just the club head in relation to the whole system, and the whole system's reacting to the pressure. So essentially, it's pressure and club head. So here, the pressure's moving, and the body's following. If we're moving everything together, so if we're using our mass... It slows the whole process down. Yes, I can swing the club now, and people might assume this is timed, but you really you're moving the whole thing as a block, and this is hard to accelerate. And then, in an effort to accelerate, you might lose balance. So then you start to use the wrists because you might start to try and stabilise things a little bit, so you don't fall over. And now you use the wrists, and now you've got an issue with the low point of your swing because now you're relying on the timing of this uncocking. Because if it uncocks too early, the low point's too soon before the ball, too late you might even top it. I mean you can also top it. So you just identified what was going on yesterday. Too early. Was my low point was just all over the place. Yeah, I think, and probably too far back, that, and that gave you the things and yeah. also the t some tops. Yeah. So by yeah, the time you got sense. to the golf ball, the club has passed the hands. Yeah. And then you're hitting it obviously with that part yeah. of the golf club. So Damage. what we're looking for, the hands are going to be well ahead of the club head at impact which means the body must be even further ahead. But we don't mean in this linear direction here, it's rotation. And to get that rotation, we've got to shift our pressure to allow us to rotate. Mm. And now the lower point's gonna move further forward. Yeah. It's just then attuning that, that timing. Exactly. Now, if you don't have a GRF system, you can start with your feet together, start with the club over here, take a step back, and then feel the weight shift. So you start from here, take a step back to initiate the action, and then swing through. So what you're creating, we'll try that without, yeah, we'll, if you want to step there, George, and try it there. The carpet. So now you can feel the interaction with the ground. So start with your feet together, step back to swing back, and then. You don't have to, I mean, yeah, you can do that, come but you don't have to, yeah, you don't yeah. need to do that. So you don't, don't, don't take as wide a step back. Good. So suddenly you're, you're reacting now to that momentum. Mm. The momentum of the club is being generated by the momentum of the body, as opposed to us creating the momentum with the arms and then expecting to somehow harmonize this and tie it with the momentum of the body. It's the wrong way around. So yeah. if you're throwing a ball, momentum of the body, arms fall, react. You're off. So let's have a few shots, George, and see how it feels. I would hit some shots first doing that. So, so doing the step. So doing the step. So now, so if, starting from start here. if you start just to the left of the ball, because then when you take a step, the ball will be in the centre of your stance. Yeah. And start with the club there, just just with the wrist. That's it. So you don't have your arms out. Just let the if you want to know if you want to feel where that place is, just do a few little waggles with yeah. the club with the wrist, just to feel where this place is, and then hold it there, and then off you take off you go. Take a step.
cool. Run and go. Run and go. Cool. Now, it's good to get some feedback from the ground. I would recommend, this is a lion angle board for fitting. Okay, you can get these, buy these on eBay, dead cheap. But you do want a lion angle board because it's tough and plastic. And what we want to get, if I can step in George, we want to get this club bouncing off it. This doesn't want to be skimming the surface. Okay, so we want it bouncing off it. So you can appreciate where the hands need to be to enable us to get this descending angle of attack. And now you can feel how the body has to move to facilitate this. So what we're going to do, George, start here, step back, and then get the back. So we're going to hear now the strike, and that's really important. But we're hearing not the ball on the face, we're hearing the sole of the club with the ground. That's really crucial feedback. Start from over here. Yeah. Brilliant. It's easy to swing the golf club in the air okay, and do this exercise, but there's no ball there. This is a foot off the floor. My upper body is going to be in a totally different place when I'm hitting the ball. So this is giving us that feedback with our interaction with the ground, which is critical. Your interaction with the golf club as a result. Well done. That's really good. Does that feel a bit different? It does, yeah. What do you feel different there with the board? Look different. My pressure is shifting back towards the target a lot earlier. Um, yeah, it's almost like well, as soon as that pressure is loaded up in the right side, it's then gone straight back to yeah. target. It's yeah. not hanging around. To exactly. Not it's staying not, loaded in the right that, side. I have kind of You're slowing it down. Been aware of that in the swing. In the it kind of pressure shifts to the right side and then hangs around, just hangs out for a little while before it decides to go back <laughs> to target. So let's go with the ball with a normal swing now. Normal swing. Yeah. I'm going to have a little practice swing first. Yeah. If that's all right. Yeah. If that's all right with you, sir. Don't need to ask my permission for that, George. <laughs> we get that feel again, though. But that is not the swing. The thud. Yeah, yeah. Because there's no interaction with the ground, so that's, got, that's not relevant to a golf shot. So I would suggest you do this with a strike in mind, with the ground. Yeah, because it's a very different upper body movement in the action. Yeah. As opposed to here, my body's more vertical, yeah. whereas here I'm flexed, more side bend now. That's a great practice swing if you want to practice swing in the air, but it's that's not relative to a shot or a strike. So we've got to have that as part of the experience. Oh, oh. that is different. <laughs> Distance. Yeah, that's awesome. That's got like 20 30, right? That strike was different, more penetrating, and definitely no arms going on. Arms were just totally switched off without even thinking switch them off because it was just, yeah, just trying to not let that pressure hang around on the right side. Yeah. As soon as it's all in the right side, it's gone again. Slightly bottomy. It's a more positive action now, isn't it? Yes. You see, it's, there's always going to be conflict in the system. If you're not creating these forces and using them like this, then it's very difficult, in fact impossible, to let the arms just react because what are they reacting to? The forces aren't there. Yeah. So if you're not creating the forces in the first place and then you try and let go, really now this whole thing's in it's haywire. So. Now you've got the forces, you can let it go. Doesn't mean, as we know, gripping it firm, so let the full mobility with the wrists, maybe have a few little waggles. You normally do that now anyway. And then off you go. Well done, George, that's oh. brilliant. And then off we go with the ball. On the line board. From 
dress normal position. Yeah. In a dress position. What do you sense with the lie board in comparison to normal? I feel like my upper body is a bit more, a bit more side bend. Cool. Rather than kind of coming up and out of it. So better to have the practice swings with the ground contact yeah. than in the air because there's no, there's much much less side bend. So then you're practicing something that you don't intend to do with the real thing, and this can be the difference between range and practice. Because on the range you could be making lots of practice swings in the air and essentially then you go to the ball and you might hit it yeah. fine but you've been doing hundreds of swings in the air. You know, uh, but you know what I, I, I do on the tee boxes is, especially on a par three when I'm going to take an iron uh, and there's a possibility of taking a big old dipper because I feel <laughs> I don't want to just be taking massive divots yeah. with my practice swing. I kind of go over to the rough around, you know, Perfect. off the tee box and yeah. take my practice swing there because if I take a huge divot and let's face it, if I'm going to take a divot in my swing, in my practice swing, I'm going to be taking a divot as well. Yeah. So I just go to the rough and kind of have my practice swing there and then start. That's a great tip. Right? Just protect the uh, course a little bit. Yeah, that's a good use of your environment for practicing. Preparing yourself for your shot. Shift that for your shot. That's it. Oh, yes. Mm. That's the one. Now you had a more pronounced forward press with your pressure there. Yeah. And I think it's sometimes good to actually, with that forward press, actually a bit more assertive and feel the place where you want to go to yeah. at the speed you want to do it. Mm. So we're not talking Matt Wolf style, as in exaggerated too much, but you can see where he's going with it. He's moving his pressure in a way and moving his body into a place where he intends to go. That might be a bit too contrived because we, what we're wanting to do is just feel the pressure. We don't need to go into all that detail. It could be. It could just be adding more interference. What we want to do is just feel where we want that pressure to go. And at the speed, bang, bang, and you're off. So it's it's triggering the golf swing, essentially. So you're not starting from a static position. There's nothing static about a golf swing. Yeah. Cool. Feel okay? Yeah, it feels good. It feels different, which is a good thing. Yeah. Because if you didn't feel different, you'd probably get the same results. Nice. That's better. That's, That's piercing. Nice. Lower spin, good launch. I feel less angry already. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a bullfight. You've got to give yourself a pat on the back sometimes, George. Brilliant. Well done, mate. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Enjoy that? Yeah, very much cool. so. Thank you. So, just a couple of things. If you've got a GRF, great. If not, you've got simple exercise you can use and a live board, get yourself one of those on eBay if you can, uh, or Amazon, simple exercises and no thinking really. And take a representative practice thing. Exactly. See you next time guys.